herzlich willkommen hier auf der Vision Stage. Ich war letzte Woche in Berlin. Gesundbrunnen Bahnhof bin ich angekommen. Und dann brauchte ich genau nur eine App. Eine App, um von A nach B zu kommen. Das Ganze war so sexy, dass ich mich in Yelby, so heißt die App, verliebt habe. Und genau darum soll es heute gehen. Mobility as a Service. Wir We'll get started with an expert. She's worked at German government, Roland Berger, Axel Springer, and since 2019, she's solutions. been um, head of telecom mobility also solutions. 2021, she was nominated one of the most important 100 business women um, creating progress for Germany. Please give a big hand to Olga, Dr. Olga Nevska. It is great to have you here and you've got the stage. Thank you very much for this great welcome. I'm a bit nervous because my team is here as well. This is why it's crowded. So um, it's all of them here uh, to have a look at police mobility and talking about mobility as a service. This is what we're actually offering at Telekom. And you may have seen that everybody is using this app. And the question is why? What does this app give us? Mobility as a service. I'm heading a telecom fleet, becoming a mobility provider. And when I took on this role, my boss told me at telecom, we need sustainable mobility. Please include more e-vehicles in our fleet. And I asked myself, is this really um, mobility when we're in a traffic, in an electric vehicle traffic jam? So let's talk about sustainable mobility, the trends and tendencies, and mobility as a service is a solution for a better, more sustainable life. And um, the notion sustainable mobility was coined by the World Bank based on four criteria. Safety, I want to get on the bus and get off the bus and be still alive. And uh, data-driven mobility uh, means that I'm booking everything with one app. So data become increasingly important. That's data safety and data security. Efficiency is another aspect. It's not only about the investment. Who's a car owner? Who's got two cars in your family? Who uses the so-called uh, job ticket and a bicycle? Do you know the price of a car per year around about? Please have a guess. There are people who've calculated that 7.5 thousand euros if you count the sale, insurance, um, repair, um, filling the fuel tank and um, today we want to be more efficient. I want to pay less for real mobility. That's what I want and you want as well, I assume. Then green mobility is easy to understand. So if you're entirely green, you can work at home. What we want is use electrical vehicles, use shared mobility, and that's what we're actually enlarging in Germany as a service. And um, being in Cologne today, you can see you have a shuttle on demand, you have scooters, you have bicycles, shared bicycles, and public transport, but 60% of the people are using their private cars. Why is that so? What we're lacking is unified access to mobility. I want to use just one app with one click going somewhere or anywhere. That's what we're developing, actually. We're going to look at the trends as well for mobility. The trends are there. It's connected and shared mobility, platform aggregators, Flexbus, Uber, that play a role besides the OEMs and electrification as well as connectivity. So if this is all connected, um, that's connecti uh, mobility as a service. And I assume that there are experts here 
being connected from A to B, digital, with different means of transport. What does that mean for the mobility transition? It may look complicated until 2030 we want to reach the climate goals because shared mobility is given and autonomous driving as well and we want to spend less money because in cities we have particular needs and we would like to optimize things. This is also revealed by surveys. Cities will have to change as well. Um, looking at Aachener Straße, you have so many bicycles and cars do not have much space. And this will be the story of the future because cities will have to reach the climate goals laid down by uh, Paris summit. Hamburg is a forerunner, Bonn as well. Things will change, but of course this shouldn't impede our businesses and local business needs still to benefit from that. We want to be more sustainable and um, I want to um, have my um, organic muesli delivered on a green vehicle and this needs to be ruled by legislators as well and this leads us to mobility it needs to be connected digital on demand there are a thousand solutions i hope that you've seen all the solutions available and mobility providers need to be connected however there is no real transition so far even not in Cologne. We have cool applications in Cologne, in Bonn and in Northern Westphalia, but still there is no transition. Why is that? Well, that leads me to coffee. People need coffee. It may sound weird, doesn't it? It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Some want latte macchiato, others want cappuccino or espresso. Everybody needs something different. And coffee is a metaphor here. I'm going from A to B and I have an intermediate stop where I can get a cup of coffee. I feel people are looking after me. They know what my need is or my problem is and they want to solve it. Starbucks has created a coffee ecosystem. It's not about coffee it's about spending time good music i can work there i've got wi-fi and coffee is a metaphor to say a transition will only take place when we think of the perspective of the end user those people traveling actually and um, connected life plays a decisive role here uh, my team was talking about coffee because I thought they're going bizarre now, but no, they're actually right. And research has revealed that when people go um, to work in the morning, they buy coffee. And in our fleet management, um, we have some complaints that the coffee cup doesn't go anywhere. And this is really important nowadays. And this is what we also consider at Telecom. Connected mobility doesn't create a transition yet. The problem can only be solved once we're really connected. So I need to go to the office to meet my friends, to go shopping. And as long as my problem isn't solved, how can I take my daughter to kindergarten and go to work later on? I won't renounce from using my car. So what will actually happen? In most cases, as we see here, connected mobility uh, means that I am booking things once, paying things once. It's a no-brainer, it's easy. Our answer to the transition is that probably there will be no transition. When I go to the office, I will go shopping after work and this ecosystem needs to be uh, established. So why do we need mobility? Let's have a, m a technical perspective. We want to commute to the office and do our shopping, grocery shopping. Take our kill children, parents or whoever to kindergarten or school we'll go on holiday and go to meet friends and if we want to go for a mobility service transition 
simplicity plays a major role, but lifestyle is still means to be integrated into life and providing solutions for going to work, going to kindergarten and grocery shopping. This is a perspective that is missing. When it comes to connectivity, we are still asking who owns the customer, who owns the KPIs, but we still don't address customers' needs in reality. Let's go through this coffee journey, and this is also a metaphor for the grocery shopping, for example. When going to the office, we want to have a cup of coffee. and. When I swap trains uh, and then I have to go to take the bus, it's great that in the eight minutes I have a QR code to get a cup of coffee. We sometimes meet to have a cup of coffee in a cafe or restaurant. It would be great if this app would guide me to all the coffee uh, bars where well, I can um, have a cup of coffee and at night time I want to buy bread, I want to buy groceries to spend the night with my family and as long as these aspects are not considered, a transition uh, will not be feasible because at the end of the day it's customer experience and this journey from um, end to end from the customer's perspective and from my point of view there is too little mobility um, openness. So mobility providers are more involved in keeping customers and things like that instead of looking to fulfill customers' needs. So um, this is an example when we swap from the train to the bus. I have eight minutes to get a cup of coffee and I take my beaker, I have a QR code, I get a cup of coffee. This is something that will create a transition and coffee is just a metaphor here. Don't get me wrong. So how can we put things into practice? At Deutsche Telekom we have one app that provides one journey for all transport modes between Cologne and Bonn. Here in Cologne it will be feasible because many parties are playing a role. Um, the public transport providers and telecom to provide the best customer experience. And I know we're not perfect, but for 20 years we've learned how we can manage our customers and what do they need. So mobility needs to become the third universe besides the life at home and at work. And this is the transition. Let's think an ecosystem. And at the end of the day, it is about coffee, as I'm saying. Everybody should have his own coffee ecosystem. And in Cologne, we say everybody's different. And now I'm looking forward to discuss things with um, Totinia. Where's Totinia? I'm through. <laughs> ah, I'll give you a big hand. Great. Thank you very much for this interesting talk. Olga, take a seat. It was perfect to prepare the panel uh, discussion that will get started now. We'll talk about Olga's subject in more detail. This is why please join in welcoming the next guest, Marcel Philipp, CEO of eMobility Hub GmbH, former Lord Mayor of the city of Aachen. Thank you very much for joining us on stage. Last but not least, we've got Claudia Falkinger, co-founder and Punkt Vorstrich GmbH CSO, the consultancy agency represented by Claudia. Mobility as a service. Mobility as a service. Olga, you mentioned it. It is necessary to go for traffic transition. First of all, I would like to check with you how you evaluate mobility as a service in Germany right now and in Austria. 
I do think that we realize now there is um, a vivid industry, but we are far off um, an upscaling of connected mobility. We have individual traffic with bicycles and cars. On the other hand, we have um, public transport trying to use the problems, but in between there is a big gap, a big canyon gap, <laughs> and we need to fill this gap because you can't take someone from individual driving to public service if this is, doesn't comprise an offer connecting to coffee or whatever to provide an added value, you know, simplifying everyday life or whatever. And uh, we just all started this journey. Mobility as a service needs to fill this gap. And we're establishing concept papers and carrying our tests in uh, close to reality labs, but we have to really come up with good ideas. Claudia, what is your idea concerning Austria? We don't have a one-size-fits-all solution, as Olga said. Going back to her coffee example, mobility as a service enables us to fulfill people's needs. And there is a variety of needs of mobility solutions, use them targetedly and also create sustainability mobility solutions um, that is really most comfortable. And we really have to see what the different needs are. For example, in our audience, there is no one size fits all solution that will um, fill people's needs. In Berlin, for example, we've got the app or Hamburg with, I don't remember, it's called Switch, I think. And in uh, North Westphalia, we have the Easy app. And every different region develops their own app, which is okay. We don't need to have one app only. The question is, are we daring to connect them? So a customer driving from Hamburg to coming from Hamburg to Cologne using the same tariff scheme and same app. We have many island solutions uh, that do not work according to customers' needs. Um, penetration is important, but um, public uh, service doesn't uh, include uh, the private sector. So in Bonn, for the first time, you made it to um, have a, the private sector to book uh, with the private sector app to bo book the um, public service, public transport. But uh, many are afraid to come up with their own agreements and say, OK, we should go into this direction. But this is a basic precondition. Having uh, this permeability is important to have a customer-centric app. In Austria, you may know that since uh, last year, we have the climate ticket, so you can use all um, public transport from the train to tram, bus, and whatever and even um, micro-mobility uh, systems. And in Austria, um, it's actually the government-run um, train society, but let's say um, via an app in Austria with all federal states, you can cover uh, the mobility needs and data-wise. I've got a different opinion, but the offer is, let's say, without limits. And you don't have to consider which ticket do I need, and um, that's really very useful for 140,000 tickets that have been sold, which is quite a high number. It is. Claudia, why do you think in Austria it's feasible and not in Germany? What is the difference? Hmm. Is this the le legislation? We're a smaller country, but there were a lot of discussions and even, let's say, fights. It's quite exciting that um, there is, um, let's say, a pan-national pan system and the federal ministry has focused a priority on the solution, otherwise it wouldn't have been feasible and has then developed as a consequence. Olga, you were talking about the different apps in Germany and they are not connected. Where do we need mobility as a service? Does every German big city need a mass app or what is actually our 
purpose, our goal. My starting point mean is that we have to, we should live mobility differently. Mobility as a service might be a solution um, going towards shared and sustainable mobility. And of course, we have to take into account the criteria I just mentioned in my talk. In Germany, we have specific uh, conditions and every city has its own decision-making process. And um, if we know the problem and solutions, I think the um, political will needs to shape out the framework conditions, meaning connectivity throughout Germany. And there are so many players like you, ourselves, who have the technology up and running in the private sector, um, trying to be involved. And solutions are there. Uh, the failure is actually the, the will to implement them. And Marcel, what do you think? Well, I think there should be a variety of apps and access because a customer-centric solution is only that because the different ecosystems we're using uh, have different needs. Not each app can fit for every need. So you're a big player providing good solutions, but there will be Google and Amazon that will also provide a mobility app. And uh, when it comes to public um, providers, there will also be um, city-run apps uh, that are also important and necessary. And as an add-on, there will be a level of closer usage groups um, for um, company mobility for smaller enterprises than telecom that are reasonably laid out because if you have a specific development, um, software development, you only use very few clicks because you can anticipate what the user needs. If there is a specific target group, you can you can even simulate individual traffic, which is not feasible with one uh, app for all. So this world will be diversified and colorful. It's a benefit and not a drawback. Okay, I think we all think that mobility as a service is necessary, but who will be in charge? Who should push this subject in cities? Will it be um, municipal councils? Will it be politics? Claudia, I think these solutions um, require us all to go for a mobility transition, and I'm convinced in terms of responsibilities users should be integrated as from the outset because ownership will then be more enlarged in order to know people's needs. They, there will be a higher acceptance. This is also true for business parks, for example. So um, this really helps us to get into good solutions and then you have to check how this is in and in how far this is accepted. So um, this is our approach, actually, to incorporate uh, different groups and take them all on board. So, of course, you need a certain ownership. Marcel, as former Lord Mayor, what would you say? Can you motivate people? Well, um, being the Lord Mayor in former times, I would have said that it can't be the city only to do that. So I'd say uh, the public transport um, companies always want to do everything themselves, but it's actually not their mission to uh, rule individual traffic. They need to provide the basis for um, people who are socially disadvantaged and others who should be bundled, create access and create efficient traffic in cities. But their mission stops at the time when you go into a rural area where individual traffic is necessary that cannot be um, provided by public um, transport. And it would be nice if uh, the public, let's say, uh, I'm now working in the private sector and I'm talking to the public sector and saying, OK, please, um, can you can you find your limit? So we need to cover the gap. And we also want to shape out a responsible framework um, with the so many startups that are all present here um, that cannot work under um, the risk of um, losing their business model because someone else wants to claim it. Olga, what would you say? Yes, I do. 
agree with that. And we've got uh, good examples from Bonn, Rhine and Sieg area where our solution works well. It is only feasible because all stakeholders and players uh, sat at a round table and the political uh, decision makers shaped out good framework conditions. So the will is given, the political will. And you're right. Of course, we want to do many things ourselves. We're the private sector and our framework conditions are there. The need is there and it's um, high noon now to define things in Germany. We can, of course, do that via legislation and say everybody needs to somehow find a solution and um, keep APIs open. Um, this is even a request by the EU Commission and this is also prevailing in Finland or with a good will. You can also achieve things. So these are the two ways, legislation and goodwill. Sounds good. And the critical question would be, how can this be financed? Who will be responsible for bearing the cost? So some uh, public service um, traffic um, providers um, have difficulties with their finance. So good mobility solutions do not in the first place fail because there is a lack of finance. We have 50 million autos. The cost in the pro month is between 500. We've got 50 million cars that cost 500 to 700 euros per month. So you know what the expenses are and people are not even considering the price of, a, of their private car. So it's even more than um, the national budget. But it's entirely inefficient. So mobility as a service is providing an alternative nowadays uh, between um, public transport and private traffic. But it's not, uh, it's not only um, important for the climate, but it's also econom economically um, important. And we shouldn't say, well, we want to somehow fight against each other, but we should actually cooperate. And um, we would be capable of finding many solutions that wouldn't even require more budget. Sounds promising. And this mobility as a service app, how should that look like in order to make it really feasible and handy? Well, to me, mobility as a service is like um, a Sherpa. Um, to give you an example, I came from Vienna with using the night train, and we had more than two hours. We were more than two hours late. Well, I was right in the city center, but the others. Um, traveling to Cologne needed to get their connection or let's say in the morning we didn't even know that we were late. It wasn't being late the difficulty but we weren't informed and then um, the staff on the train didn't even know that there was a deviation in Germany and this um, had a consequence um, of being late and um, it was important to have all this information so this Sherpa might have helped me to get to Cologne, but also to find my way through in Cologne. So I was um, at the train station. I was even confused and didn't know where to go, even though there was only one central station. Um, but, you know, traveling in an easygoing way requires communication. I only want to get from A to B and how I couldn't care less. I'm using a train because, uh, well, I might take a taxi to be on time. And um, these are my needs and this needs to be communicated and this um, creates a success. <laughs> Olga, what are the features uh, that uh, you must miss out on a Mars app? Well, the basics must be right. Um, you have to be able to book something, you have to be able to pay and that's a must because otherwise you won't have any seamless mobility. And then coffee. <laughs> no, I think it's so, so great. You know, you know, the first thing I saw when I entered this place, yeah, there was a, 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 this easy park uh, uh, stand. They've got an enormous uh, poster, a uh, park here for free coffee. And it worked. Well, it just shows that uh, uh, you need to, to be accompanied and this uh, seamless mobility app has to work and pl uh, whether I'm uh, the train is late or I'm late or whether I can use a car, share a car with Marcel, I need this information in order to manage my travel and uh, that I have, the app has to know where I want to go and uh, my end-to-end -end journey has to be managed by this app. 
that can be as complex as you like and what's dangerous if you, when we talk about uh, those 360 degree systems uh, then uh, then uh, and when we can select uh, also that that becomes critical but I want to have a minimum a seam, as a seamless journey, and uh, the condition is I mustn't think of my journey. I have to think of the, 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 the where I want to go, the destination, and the app has to manage that. So once I booked and um, my head, there was nothing to be seen on on the app um, that the train was late. Uh, so which was the app? No, not a telecom app, didn't you? That cannot be, can it? No, that's one of the use cases uh, that we simulate. What happens when the, I'm late? Does my app know? And that's my subject. I'm working on that we're having the same destination, and uh, uh, when when the train is, is uh, immobile for three hours, hey, you for you go to police, and and uh, the taxi costs 60 euros, but you can share this, and uh, you pay 15 and per person, and that's what I want in this app. So the the, the seamless character of the app, any, and the 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 ease of use, uh, there are important conditions because uh, municipal providers uh, just put the entire tariff system and they want to bundle everything and that becomes very untransparent then and that's where it fails but the important step following this is is that that you bring this down to to human to the the needs of the the personal and uh, and then, then you have to look through the eyes of the customer and and uh, and uh, you want to see uh, what's the important information that I get. Is the train lit? How can I optimize this? Because I've configured the, this app for this to this end. So then I have my preferences and, and uh, behavior, and the, the app gives me the right information that's important, uh, that's relevant for me, and much uh, more important than the the, 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 the the global technical view. That, uh, that public providers, uh, public service providers um, think is the ultimate, but you can't use it. So it's quite a, uh, so with the development of the app, uh, we're going deeper and deeper in, into this. Uh, so for the end users, it's completely uninteresting which tariffs exist uh, uh, anywhere. I would have to have a p ticket and uh, how this is uh, shared by different uh, providers, I don't, I'm not interested in. So the situation is, works differently in Germany, and this is uh, uh, an analogy with telecommunications, uh, whether you use a mobile phone, and uh, whether there's Vodafone in Germany, in France, you still have telecom or Vodafone, what, uh, you like, and that, that is uh, uh, similar in mobility, one tariff, and I decide, uh, whether I want to use uh, this provider and this provider, or I take this one tariff, and we've got technology, so we share the costs. It's all there. Well, it's a good uh, example in the, the with the easy, uh, not almost failure tariff, where you, where you book in, and then the distance is relevant for the, the costs, so that you don't have any borders uh, between the different providers and tariff structure. The next step would be that you just also uh, can use this solution in every private sector app. So we talk about public uh, transport, but there are other means to. So, so uh, public uh, service cannot solve everything in uh, mobility service. You've got the Deutsche Bahn, and they have great solutions there. And that's the, the DB Navigator. And uh, uh, so the, what's missing often is the last mile. If I want to go from one part to, uh, to go on to the next one, I have to change uh, the tram, uh, and I'm late at my fitness studio. So this net connection between private transport has to be provided. Without uh, public uh, transport, has to fear that, that that we're not being used. So uh, this is more on who who uh, connects with whom and who is owning the customer that I brought in, um, but can also use this app. And, and the customers don't think about that. So in the, where you showed the space, you, you had the S sharing there. I would uh, also add the, the shuttle there because uh, 
uh, this an enormous uh, field uh, where uh, some uh, pri private uh, the economy can use this to bring people together between private traffic and the bus. So everyone who uh, bring together with a shuttle is a rele relevant reduction in cost in terms of traffic ace and CO2 em emissions. So that this combination of the different mobility uh, offers work. Uh, what what did, what do you need uh, also in terms of infrastructure? How do we have to redesign this? Do we have to do this? Well, well it's what, what's missing is where, where uh, the coffee is being offered and served. So the basic structure of these hubs is missing. So this coffee was my first today. But, but I think that is, is, is <laughs> it's very well liked. So, well, we, not only the connection between uh, new, new vehicles, new services, but we need a different infrastructure. We have infrastructure for private, but we have infrastructure also for public transport. What we're missing is the infrastructure, what's in between. And you need these nodes and hubs. So if I always want to have the right means of transport at the right time, and uh, it's, um, uh, my behavior is ecologically uh, and relevant and sustainable, so I have to use different means of transport, or be it also in the town itself. I need, I need to cha have change over hubs. And if I have to walk uh, half a kilometer through the rain, I don't get any coffee, it doesn't work. So I also there I need a seamless uh, and immediate access to quality where I feel good, where my ways and distances are as short as possible and in, in any, at any scale. So there could be perhaps uh, two parking spaces and a charging point in, in, in your quarter. Then you've got the mob mobile stations where you can uh, connect uh, different types of offers in terms of mobility, what we need, bigger mobility hubs, where any uh, um, service uh, that you can imagine from the coffee to the supermarket and uh, the, the fuel and uh, energy, whatever we need in the future is connected. And all the goods of what you need daily and, uh, to c and all the services that you from the, the cleaner uh, to to shop for little articles uh, up to repair your know, shops you you will find all this at those uh, hubs but the the readiness also to define those areas to support these concepts as a municipality and also to admit private providers there that's where we are right at the beginning so what can we learn from you and, and what do mobility hubs look in Austria? Can, perhaps you can tell us a bit more about Well, this experimenting areas, this testing, and that's essential. It's like a, like, like a set of, it's, it's, a, it's like in a game that you walk around or you move around, you try this, you try that. And what about the money uh, that you spend? So the, uh, I opened uh, uh, and set up an innovation center at the, the Federal Railways in Austria, but it needs a narrative and in order to take the people on board. And it, it requires different types of planning and development. So what I always say, you plan for what you know. And, and, and I read an article, uh, uh, wrote an article in the Public Mobility magazine. Perhaps you think of developer teams that you know, and it is a one dimensional thinking. And so the diversity in mobility needs, I mean, we don't need enough. We don't need enough about the way m people are moving around. And that you, you have to be awareness, and this awareness is um, uh, necessary and required to provide the, the proper solutions and to ex access the people and to do and to um, mobility is what you use to do, and and uh, so we take the, the, the people along, and that's what, where the success lies. Well, I envy Austria because you're very open to this subject, and uh, uh, Vienna is a wonderful example for with, where with 300. Say, uh, 350 euros. Well, it costs about a thousand euros, by the way, but that covers Austria, the entire country. No, Vienna is 365, but even better, and we have examples. Uh, we have to uh, at the level of, of the uh, offer. We need data. I, I know where the hubs uh, are placed. I, I uh, have to know where Marcel is guided. Uh, that. Uh, 
goes from Aachen to Bonn and uh, shops in between term and uh, shows. Uh, research says that 70% that, um, of the people are uh, willing to uh, release their data and we do that every time we, we, we buy a pizza when we do this, but mobility. And we said we need uh, players that uh, you can trust um, when your data is uh, used. I know one I'm working for. And what's important is information. We see uh, the, the landscape is uh, very inhomogeneous. Everyone has a diff different APIs. And um, we won't uh, see this in our lifetime until we have brought Germany onto one platform. But that's not necessary. So the apps have to be able uh, to, to connect mentally and technically so that's a seamless journey for the customer. Or you put, uh, so you impose a layer and say one tariff for Germany. And if customers want this, they pay for that. And then you have the information without even knowing um, what uh, Marcel said. So you can do uh, edge computing to, to split this up in a sensible way and cover everything. So we talk about the infrastructure that must be provided so we can have this attractive offer. But I ask myself also, who are the users? Who uh, can be enthused for, for this? Do we get the, the car drivers out of the car? to use this app, well, you can do sort of a negative selection. Um, uh, those who uh, can use a bicycle uh, on, on routes that where bicyclists can use, then you should, or, um, they should use their bicycles. And the commuters, uh, uh, where commuting is possible, they should be able to use um, the public transport. But the two-thirds of the users cannot use all this, so what we develop has to be uh, customized to the individuality uh, within the system that is required. So it's not enough uh, to have a solution without uh, having thought about who the solution is provided for. Uh, and those people who say, I cannot um, uh, do away with my car in my everyday life. And that's the, those are the ones we have to address. And those are different solutions um, than they are on top of the agenda of uh, municipalities to, uh, yeah, it, it sounds good uh, if, if you uh, uh, invest uh, three and a half million more in, in public transport. That looks like um, climate protection, but we only might um, <laughs> create lines um, which, which are used uh, by even more uh, people. So they have to think about the commuters and uh, they have to think about the interests of the employer and the employees. The employer also is interested that um, the climate protection is relevant uh, for, for the employees too. But this this means also that then then yeah then you just address this target group as an employer and the target group who says I cannot do without my car. So you, you it could be a commuter shuttle, it could be a, a split uh, or division of the journey to, from a, a micro mobility solution to a strong axle that's provided by the employer. Mobility concepts can be of important, and, and that that is a colorful uh, field that makes it so complicated, but that provides the final solution. Let me say something to that. Oh, um, so, oh, so the discussion is, is, is uh, how do we get people away from the car, but the, the, the individual traffic, car traffic will remain. That's good. And I've got my team here. Oh, we, we have uh, 24,000 cars in, in my company. But those who have the possibility and, and are free to decide that uh, I want to do it differently, and those we have to take on board first of all, and others who can decide because mobility services uh, is not a solution for everyone because we have to have the proper infrastructure. And, and people who commute uh, 60, kil 60 kilometers uh, uh, um, where there is no public transport, they don't, can't do that on an e-scooter. And those who have, uh, 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 who want to change, uh, and they will do this, but uh, we haven't made this possible, we haven't enabled that. The car uh, or the vehicle will be the, the possibility that makes most sense. Uh, also in the future, but what's not so easy to accept, that's 1.075 um, persons are uh, sitting in one uh, car when they're commuting, so there's one person per car. 
and uh, and that's uh, so inefficient. That that means where that where it's possible to say share your car. It's a car, but it's more efficient. Well, thank you very much for your honest statement. Well, in order, to, we have to talk about the attractive offers. Does we have to talk about to, does everybody be a car owner or can you share ownership? And um, that that brings us even further in the discussion. What are the other possibilities? And uh, what's often missing is this holistic approach in in companies uh, so that they think about everything. They said we have we bring up, uh, develop a car sharing app, but what can you do in terms of uh, labor law? And and there's there's the work culture and. Uh, there are enough people who want to change, but this is about the, the offers and uh, infrastructure, amongst other things. A lot has to be done to uh, to assure the comfort of using this. Would you agree uh, that your uh, car sharing or shuttle offer should be expanded so people leave their, their car as a, as a means of transfer? Absolutely, I will decide. And I have a car, and I drive 100 kilometers per day. I, 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 and I wish it would be different without uh, my uh, car, or, or, although it's a company car. But in, if this is as reliable and as comfortable as a car, then I would agree. Well, car sharing is a necessary um, expansion that you, that you have, should have in every quarter of the town and not as a re reality laboratory or as an alibi uh, equipment at the marketplace uh, that, you, that you have inaugurated a car sharing station. That is a basic structure. Um, also, the, that should be able to be operated in, in private economy. I think the combination of, of means, uh, different means of transport, the shuttle offers uh, that are connected. This this uh, this idea of uh, connectivity and connection is much more important than car sharing. So mobility transformation means often a, a change in behavior. So we've got the offer. We can provide this. Uh, but will this lead to the fact that people who, who are currently uh, very reluctant to do this uh, say, yes, I'll try this? Well, uh, uh, let's, uh, let me say something about car sharing or sharing. Well, if you look at the, the, the time, uh, number of users, you have about 70, 80 percent uh, male users. And uh, so it's so important to also take this into account. So this uh, starting with the gender bias to, to, to uh, leverage the full potential. And uh, you can, it's easy to do. But you, not everyone is being taken on board or addressed with new services. That there's this also mobility of care. Uh, uh, um, where are the services located? Uh, do, do you have a child seat? Uh, in this? And uh, so uh, and this goes even further when you, when you address adults or youth. And you have to 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 know the different um, patterns of behavior, of uh, movement. Well, who who is going to be left out? We have very uh, many uh, will because, as research said, the planning is uh, one-dimensional. Where uh, uh, there are uh, mobility experience and user experience needs to be uh, improved and to address the people. Uh, Olga, how do you uh, uh, include the needs? of the users in your mass app. How important is that? And how do you do this? Well, it's very important. And therefore, the information is important, and that the uh, customers are ready to share this information, and so that we uh, can also address individual needs. Otherwise, the mass uh, app won't work, and that's exactly what we do. So data protection is a subject, especially in Germany. Uh, so you you do this uh, in, in an anonymous way, or uh, and that's one. And but for customer experience is extremely important from the point of view of the customer, and you, you manage the fields of life. That's that I find a solution for where I want to go. We have to bundle this very quickly. Uh, and, uh, that is mobility and non-mobility. In uh, example of insurance, we can be more complex. We know uh, quarters where we have no public car parks, and uh, 
So we have connection to landlines and telecom, but mobility we can be connected to, and that saves cost for a lot. So, but how you get uh, people on board that you can't do this is a question of culture. Yes, it's part of the culture. And in Germany, there's a mobility history, and that is the car. Everything was bait and so on. I'm coming from Ukraine, and my history was uh, public transport. I bought a car in Germany because I, I have arrived. I can afford a car. <laughs> So um, that's neither good nor bad, but you see this, uh, that's, uh, you see, this is uh, the Friday for future, and, uh, but you don't have to take everyone on board because we have different people. It's not, not my objective. I want to provide the right offer so the customers can decide at the end, and if they don't want it, it's okay. So let's work together with those who want to do this and who can do this. Um, and we're working in a re research project around Münster, and we are getting a lot of feedback there, uh, what people think about their uh, daily mobility. And it is uh, relatively clear that 20% of those uh, 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 who are uh, connected, they want to be, uh, would be uh, using multimodality uh, if it was offered. So if, let's start with these 20% and then I convince all those who uh, do not want this at the moment. But once we have, we have established the offers, what we do is we try to, 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 to convince people of uh, multimodality or alternatives who, who cannot do away with their cars also in 10 years and, and they voice this. And that's a polarization that is of help to nobody. So that sounds good. Now, if, if you now we focus on those who really want to do, how can we um, ensure such a user experience in a mass app? You said you talked about communication, and what are other points, uh, points uh, to provide good user experience? That's it's a relationship to to the employer. So what the employer can provide for the employees to to be a good employer, and because and you think about what you can provide, optimize the tax aspects, and optimize the question of home offices of the travel of the routes and travel so and also and think of it's not only the home office and the office but there might be a world in between can it uh, make it possible that uh, my, my uh, employees uh, the, the work time starts uh, when when they board a shuttle in the morning so that re requires that employers uh, are going to deal with these issues and they can be very cost neutral they just require that you invest uh, your will, your willingness to do so, and time. And uh, so we do talk about uh, the, the, um, charging uh, parking, uh, charging point, uh, park and those are is the word that we have to put into modules. So really, no. So you, you just described telecom, didn't you? So I didn't, I <laughs> didn't notice. Well, we have shuttle on demand. We have car sharing. We have a car subscription. We have uh, we have bicycles. We have e-vehicles, and 60% uh, uh, we've got job tickets, bond card, home office, um, but and and uh, our 60% uh, uh, of our uh, employees are commuting by car, and we know why they don't do. That is this question of seamless. I've got these three apps, and and then, and I have to, I have walked uh, two kilometers uh, from the Deutsche Bahn to Telekom with my high heels. I'm not doing that. So that's uh, that way. We talk about mobility as a service, and Olga wants to go to work. Uh, there's a traffic jam, and she has to stay. She can work. And okay, it's raining today, so no high heels, uh, rather boots. And rubber boots, and uh, so, uh, and we have our own shuttles, and and we have uh, something that takes me to the office in, without being without getting wet in the rain. So three apps won't work. So Claudia, would you add something to this? I I think uh, you you mentioned this uh, perfectly. The the employers. They, they have a, they have a great lever, and, and you, you in, in include them very strongly into the private sphere, and then this it will be decisive also in the future who is the employer I'm going to select or, or choose, 
So that is uh, strengthening the employer image, uh, but also economic and ecological issues. So that's a competition also in, in that respect, and, and this will become mo much more present and uh, unavoidable. Well, unfortunately, uh, in uh, uh, telecom uh, mobility uh, or telecom is not uh, being perceived as a player. Um, it's uh, increasing, but there are countries uh, where, where employees, uh, 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 before they open the office, they have to um, provide a mobility plan. So, so you 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 mix private and and uh, office use. So we try to cover our uh, uh, that to to provide something that covers both family and friends. And uh, so, if I'm using the car the whole week, you cannot expect me uh, to uh, to take make the same same journey with public transport. And I'm convinced that's an, an important argument for mobility transformation. We're in a traffic jam, not because we want to shop for rolls in the morning, but we want to go to the office. So, so what are these the serious challenges? And when we talk about uh, mass, well, well, where do we have to be careful? And where do uh, mm, so mm, uh, revert on uh, the relationship is with the uh, public and, and private. So, uh, so the, the the awareness in in the public sector that the private sector can be used, and that awareness doesn't exist. And the main approach is we have to talk about mobility a lot. We have to do this as, as we're doing here today, and that's why police mobility is so important. This this subject must be much more present in uh, municipalities, in, in planning and administrative departments, so they, they turn the switch. We have to use the creativity. Claudia, where do you see challenges or, impo or potential for development? Well, that that the solutions are, are like Sherpas, uh, that uh, they uh, fulfill our needs uh, no matter what uh, the weather like, which shoes I wear. So to so have this seamless accompaniment and, and uh, have that provides me with the best possibilities to to design the entire seamless journey. Olga, you mustn't uh, share uh, corporate uh, uh, knowledge. So what, what what are the challenges for your mass app? Well, so what, what, what are the challenges when you want to do this for a municipality? Um, and I don't want to start, it's, it's so much. Okay, of course you have to start. And I think uh, we have to understand one thing, and, and that's a challenge. That uh, we will not have one app for Germany, uh, we have to do away with that idea. So uh, uh, um, uh, uh, we have to uh, want to connect these the different solutions. That's the biggest challenge. And secondly, we talk too much about mobility. We mustn't forget who the persons want. Do they want to have their job tickets? Uh, or perhaps it's not current anymore. So technical solutions are important. But you have to think uh, the way the customers do think. So, of course, the, the question of all questions is what are the need? What is the need? So, Mars will be a success. Uh, one last statement from all of you, so so the audience can take some messages home. Claudia, so think. I, I think we 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 are beyond uh, reality laboratories. We have to be courageous to scale things and upscale things. Two things, the, the, the willingness to uh, to implement, and that takes me to the coffee, and you have to w think the way the customer thinks, an end-to-end -end customer journey. And Claudia, what's what's needed? New narratives, so, so uh, cre creativity, uh, and just to, to fill these uh, the solutions that already exist with life. And then you take a lot of people on board. I read something. And so the, we have these flash st stores for cars, these uh, pop-up stores at school. Uh, why don't we have those uh, pop-up stores for uh, public transport or for mobility service? It's uh, attractiveness, and yeah, that's what we need. And uh, thank you very much for this uh, discussion. 
uh, 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 that, that really gives me a lot of hope. I think there will be more mass solutions in Germany. Thank you very much all the, to the audience and a big round of applause for our guests. Thank you. Um 17 Uhr geht es so we continue at 5 p.m. So if you want to listen to another uh, presentation, see you at 5.